All right, in this second video, I'm going to talk about uh, basic searching in PubMed. So here I am at the PubMed homepage, and obviously there's a search box. So let's go ahead and enter a search term. So when you're searching in PubMed, you kind of want to speak Tarzan to it. You don't necessarily want to speak in full sentences or type in full sentences. Um, you just want to focus on uh, the important words. And the important words in this case is farts. Actually get over almost 3,000 results uh, with this search. Um, and PubMed is always trying to be helpful. Sometimes it's not that helpful, but you know, it's always trying to be helpful. And you can see it's asking me, did I actually mean to say fats instead? Um, but no, I did not. Um, and as we look at this result set over here on the left side, just like you'll see in most databases, are uh, a set of filters, and um, I can you know start to limit the search based on publication dates. Um, a lot of people like to focus on the last 10 years, but sometimes it depends on um, your topic uh, that you're looking at. And there are a few limited uh, filters here for um, text availability. Uh, people always want to click on this free full text and think, you know, great, it's free. Um, however, if you've come to PubMed through the USC Libraries website, then you should be getting access to full text through our subscriptions. So there's no need to uh, to click on that that filter. Um, the ones that I use most commonly are the article type filter. Um, you can see that there are a few different types of articles um, that are listed here. So, for example, if I really want to find that kind of gold standard of um, clinical research, find some randomized controlled trials, um, I can go ahead and click that filter. Um, and what do you know? There are over 500 uh, randomized controlled trials um, that include the word farts. Um, and to turn, I can go ahead and turn that off by uh, just uh, unchecking that box. Um, and it's also important to note that there are actually additional um, article types and additional filters. So if I click this uh, additional filters button, um, I can go filter by filter. And um, for article types, you can see all of these um, additional article types that are available. Um, so say, for example, I'm really interested in um, some kind of uh, guideline, or uh, if I'm interested in an evaluation study, I can click on those and add that to my list of filters in the filter box. Um, and there's also some additional ones that show up here that aren't necessarily automatically shown as filters. One of them is age. Um, this can be a really useful uh, filter. Um, if you're focusing on a particular age group, and you can see that there is a lot of um, granularity in terms of what you can actually select as age filters. So if I wanted to include these age filters, I would just come here and click on the ones um, that I was interested in. Um, and then down here at the bottom, I'm just going to click show. So now I have these age filters available, and I can go ahead and click on uh, the age filter. So I have my set of results here. Um, so PubMed, uh, the default is to sort by best match. Um, so this is very similar to what Google tries to do, where it's trying to um, give you the, the most relevant result first. Um, I actually usually tend to prefer um, to do it by publication date. So if I click, click display options, um, I can check uh, I can change that to uh, publication date. And um, then I can see the most recent articles um, that are available. So PubMed also does some interesting things for you when you do search. Um, and it does something called automatic term mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this advanced link. So this advanced link um, will show the history um, for the search. So when you enter a search term into the search box, 
uh, PubMed looks at that term and says, oh, is, it, is this available as a mesh term? So I'm going to talk about mesh terms in the next video. Um, but uh, these are special uh, terms that are assigned to articles. And so in the case of farts, it actually finds the mesh term for flatulence, um, which is another term. And so what it does is it automatically expands out your search. So um, it searches for farts. It also searches for flatulence as a mesh term. And then it also translates, this, translates flatulence into um, a, a keyword. So now it's oring all of those uh, terms together and it's expanding your search. Um, so this is actually a really powerful uh, tool uh, within PubMed. Um, you know, it's really trying to return as many results as possible and um, really trying to help you out uh, with your search. So another part of the automatic term mapping is that um, generally when we're searching um, in Google, for example, if we want to search for a phrase, then we enclose it in quotes. However, we want to kind of avoid doing that in, um, in PubMed because that turns off this automatic term mapping um, feature. So if I go up here and I'm gonna do a double quote farts, um, and then close that quote, and then just hit enter. It's gonna add it to the query box. And then I'm gonna show you my favorite feature in PubMed. If I click this little down arrow, you see add to history. So I'm gonna click that. And it's just gonna add the search that I just did to um, my, search deep, my search history. So it's still showing me the number of results, and it's showing me the uh, list of my search history. Um, but I don't actually have to look at the results. And you can see that even though with, um, without the double quotes, I got over 2,700 results, there's actually only one result that has um, the word words. And I can click on that one to see what, see what it is. Um, so that, and I'm gonna go back to this advanced screen. So that is really what automatic term mapping is. And like I said, that's a really powerful tool that um, is a part of um, that is a part of PubMed. So another important thing um, to remember about or to remember about searching in general is something called Boolean operators. So our Boolean operators are um, the terms and or and not. And you may have heard about these before. Um, when you enter uh, words into the Google search box or your PubMed search box, it actually automatically adds in um, adds in the term and. So it's automatically searching for items that have both of those terms. So for example, if I type farts and burps um, and click Add, then I can add. I can add that to my history, um, and that actually gives me 83 results. Um, so if I do that in my query box and I do farts and burps um, here, that should give me the same number of results. Yes, because it's automatically adding that and. All right. So now the other. Um, the other Boolean operator I mentioned was or. So I'm going to do farts or burps. And what that's looking for is articles that have either or. So it's looking for articles that have farts. It's looking for articles that just talk about bar burps. Or it's looking for both of them together. It will include all of those. And if I add that to my history, you can see that I get additional um, results, more than just farts alone, and obviously more than just and. Right. And then the last Boolean operator um, is not. So not is one that I uh, encourage you to use a little caution with using, and it's also the only Boolean operator where order matters. So I could do farts, not burps, 
and I can add that to my history. So now I'm finding articles about farts that don't talk about burps. And you can see that I have 2,703, um, whereas I have 2,786, which is farts. And what do you know? 2,786 minus is 83 for both of them together, and you get 2,703. So that is that knots. But if I switch that around, and I do burps, not farts, then I'm probably going to get a di different number. You can see that I get only uh, 473. So that's the difference. Um, that's why order matters, because in the first farts, not burps, I was looking for articles of farts. And the second one, I wanted to really look at burps. And I can also take a look at the search details for fats and burps and see what else is, uh, is being included. So you see that fat flatulence mesh term like we saw in the original one. And then um, for burps, you can see that it's including this other mesh term for irritation um, and then including that as a keyword. Um, so it's automatically finding um, that additional language uh, for the term. So um, there is again another exercise uh, below the video for uh, automatic term mapping and um, you're welcome to take a look at that and um, move on to the next video.